so video 14 we will continue with the management so here we will see stone size influences the rate of spontaneous stone passage so what happens the amount the big amount of the stone it actually block the uh, you know the passage for example up to 98 percent of small stones less than 5 mm 0.2 in diameter may pass spontaneously through urination if the stone is very small automatically it will enter the passage without any blockage it will come out of the ureter okay and then spontaneously through urination within four weeks of the onset of symptoms but of larger size if it is of big size 5 to 10 mm then le less than 5 mm it comes out through the urination but if it is large which is about 5 to 10 mm in diameter then the rate of the spontaneous passage decreases to less than 53 percentage then you can see the pain management so management of pain we know that patient will be having renal colic so NSAIDs or opioids can be given to relieve the pain for the patient orally administered medication are actually very less effective which causes you know or less severe discomfort uh, or effective for less okay if the pain is less then oral medications are fine otherwise we have to give antispasmodics they do not have any further benefit so sometimes we can also give them im injection if the pain is very severe we can give them im injection so that the pain will subside then we can we see about you know expulsion therapy so what is this expulsion therapy is it is actually also called as met met medical expulsion therapy mainly used for this renal calculi so without surgery the doctors will prescribe certain medications which will automatically expel the uh, stones from the body okay so the medication may pass through the stone spontaneously without the need of surgery so the use of medication to speed the spontaneous passage of stones in the ureter is referred to as medical expulsive therapy it is also called as met so when they give medicine this will be sent you know through the ureter it will pass out okay through urination so several agents like what are the drugs including alpha adrenergic block blockers all these are examples which you can remember such as tamsulosin and calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine have been found to be effective alpha blockers appear to lead to both higher and faster stone clearance rates alpha blockers however may only appear to be effective for stones over 4 mm but less than 10 mm in size so alpha blockers if you are going to use it should be less than 4 it should not become bigger than 10 mm in size a combination of tamosulin and artico a corticosteroid may be better than tamosulin alone okay so combination of drugs can be given this treatment also appear to be useful adjunct to lithotripsy so with lithotripsy they can also give this it goes hand in hand for the treatment now talking about lithotripsy that is a fourth type we see that lithotripta machine is used so usually they use in an operating room this machine and other equipment also seen in the background they keep everything you know including anesthesia machine and mobile fluoroscopic system you keep all this along with this lithotripsy so extra extra corporal shock wave therapy already we have seen what it is from the external they'll give a shock it is a non-invasive technique where the shock will be given to the kidney and this will allow to break down the kidney stones into fragments or tiny pieces okay so esw is carried out when the stone is present near the renal pelvis it involves the use of lithotriptar machine to deliver externally applied focused eye intensity pulses of ultrasonic energy to cause fragmentation of a stone over a period of around 30 to 60 minutes so the procedure is carried out for about half an hour to one hour then you have laser lithotripsy it is a surgical procedure so to remove stones from urinary tract so laser we know that they'll do small you know like opening and then through which the uh, instrument will be passed they will break down and they will remove the stones from the kidney ureter bladder or urethra okay so next we will go on to see pharmacological or nutritional therapy so opioid analgesic agents like it is given to prevent shock already we have seen syncope and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are given okay neurolithiasis we have seen it increase uh, increased fluid intake to assist in stone passage unless patient is vomiting patients with renal stone should drink 8 to 10 8 oz glasses of water daily or half iv fluids prescribed to keep the urine dilute for calcium stones if you see reduced dietary pro protein sodium intake liberal fluid intake medications to acidity furin acidity urine such as ammonium chloride and thiazide diuretics if parathermal production is increased so for calcium stone we know that 
we have to give them reduced dietary protein should be reduced sodium should be reduced more amount liberal amount of water should be given and if the urine is acidified we have to give drugs in order to you know uh, remove that acidification okay medications to uh, acidify urine such as ammonia chloride and thiazid diuretics can be given okay so sorry medication to acidify urine if it is alkaline then we have to acidify it okay for that we use ammonium chloride thiazid diuretics if para thyroid para production is increased then for uric stone we have to give low purine and limited protein diet allo allopurinol that is xylopurine tablet can be given so what are the low purine diet because these things you should know when you are giving nursing uh, you know teaching to the patient so they are like eggs nuts peanut butter low fat all fruits and vegetables bread pasta rice cake can bread corn bread and popcorn so all these are you know has got low purine diet and it can be given to the patient next talking about the cystine stones so these are low protein diet alkalization of urine increased fluid can be given so we know low, along with low protein diet the food also should be low in salt and low in animal protein okay for cystine we have already seen that in the type then for oxalate stone we have to dilute the urine limit uh, you know uh, limited oxalate intake like spinach strawberries rhubarb chocolate tea peanuts and wheat bran can be taken okay then stone removal procedure so we have already seen in medical management so nurses should assist here okay so what are the various stone removal procedures we'll just see it again ureteroscopy so stones fragmented with use of laser they will break it down electrohydraulic lithotripsy or ultrasound and then it is removed then the stones are removed then a uh, extra corporal shock wave lithotripsy percutaneous nephrostomy okay so it is surgical procedure where you do opening in the kidney and then you remove or endurological methods already we have seen it is an invasive small invasive surgery or procedure where the fragmented stones will be removed then electrohydraulic lithotripsy okay then we are seeing chemolysis okay stone dissolve dissolved the, the uh, dissolution through the medications can be given alternative for those who are poor risk for other therapies when others things they cannot undergo they can undergo this or easily through the medication drugs they will try to dilute it okay then uh, you have surgical removal is performed only in 1 to 2% of patient surgically opening up and removing it's not rarely done okay it is about only 1 to 2% now coming to nursing process so assessment we know that we have to assess the pain discomfort so based on this you should also formulate nursing diagnosis so assess for pain and discomfort including severity location radiation of pain cva angle assess for associated symptoms including nausea vomiting diarrhea abdominal distension then observe for signs of urinary tract infection like chills fever frequency and hesitancy and obstruction frequent urination of small amounts oliguria or aneurysm then uh, you have to observe with uh, you know oliguria you know less than absence of urination aneurysm oliguria is less than 500 ml per day so measure all this so we are to look out for urine for blood any strain of stones or gravel stones or like sands if it is present focal history history we have to collect about the urinary tracts or tract stones okay and current episode and measures to prevent recurrence assessment all these then relieving pain as per the medication already we have seen you have to administer iv or im can be given so mostly oil injection pain injection will be im so that has to be given in said opioid we have seen give them good you know comfort relieve the pain uh, you have to monitor if the patient is comfortable then monitoring and managing complication so make sure that you give fluid intake ambulate the patient iv fluid intake and output chart should be given vomiting if they are doing then we have to check okay then we have to ambulate uh, so that moving of the stone also is done through the urinary moving the patient asking the patient to walk okay urinary tract strain urine through gauze we can take when the patient has passed urine we can strain it and we can see if there are any stones crush any blood clots present in the urine and inspect sides of urinal and bed pan for clinging stones so you can report to the physician and in the friends of front of the physician as per their order we can carry out instruct patient to report decreased if they have bloody urine fever pain any signs they have to inform, inform immediately 
then instruct patient to report any increase in pain so all of a sudden again if they are developing any pain they have to report immediately we have to monitor the vital signs for early indications of infection okay and then infection should be treated with appropriate antibiotic should be given so teaching points we have to tell them explain the cause why it has caused okay and how to prevent it again so there are more chances to prevent again if they do not change their lifestyle eating habit drinking fluid okay so all this has to be reemphasized to them encourage patient to follow regimen to fo avoid further stone formation including maintaining a high fluid intake they should take more of fluid they should excrete you know urine for 3000 to 4000 ml of urine every 24 hours then recommend that patient have urine culture so urine culture should be done one to two months recommend them that recurrent urinary infection if any infection any discomfort they have to report it to the hospital immediately then encourage increase mobility they have to pass then tell them to avoid vitamin d because again it absorbs calcium right so it can lead to stones so patient if had surgery instruct them signs and symptoms of complication which has to be reported to the physician they have to come back and uh, a report emphasize the importance of follow up they have to come to assess kidney function to ensure eradication of removal everything is done or what that has to be told to the patient and family if patient had esw eswl okay lithotripsy then in this condition we have to encourage for them to take more of fluid assist in the passage of stone fragments inform the patient to expect hematuria and possibly bruise so after the procedure immediately they will have hematuria bleeding will be there we have to inform because in the urinary catheter when it is passing into the urinary bag they should not get scared okay where the fragment also will come outside so we have to instruct patient to check his or her temperature and notify if there is any kind of you know fever okay so if it is above 38 degrees celsius or above 101 immediately they have to report and pain should be relieved through the pain uh, uh, you know analgesics opioid analgesics provide instruction of any necessary home care and follow up care then coming on to providing home and follow up care after eswl when the uh, you know uh, this procedure has been done it is important for us to you know tell them that is the extra corporeal shock wave lithotripsy is done we have to inform certain advice okay so instruct patient to increase fluid they have to take as we have seen so uh, may, uh, passage of stone fragments may take 6 weeks to several months sometimes few stones might remain and it might take some time to come so it is important for them to drink lot of uh, water if they are not undergoing you know a procedure where the stones will be removed into you know if that is not done then they have to make sure that they carry on okay like uh, already we have seen like this after the you know electro wave has been sent from the outside right we tend to uh, remove it so if the patient's surgery is not done minimal surgery is done to remove the stones then they have to make sure that they drink lot of water okay but if the patient has undergone you know endo euro surgical treatment where the stones has been removed then no problem otherwise ask them to take more water sometimes it might take 6 weeks to several months then instruct patient about signs and symptoms of complication like fever decrease urine output pain so these are complication which they have to report immediately inform patient that hematuria is anticipated but should subside hematuria will be there but it should subside within 24 hours so nurses should be careful give appropriate dietary instruction based on the composition of stone already we have seen according to their type of stone we have to give them which all foods to avoid which all food they can add then encourage regimen to avoid further stone formation advise patient to adhere to prescribed diet very important fluid diet very important teach patient to take sufficient fluid in the evening to prevent urine form becoming concentrated at night so by evening itself they should take more of uh, fluid so that you know the urine does not become concentrated next you have continuing care so closely monitor the patient to ensure the treatment has been effective and that no complications have developed so make sure that no complications has developed assess the patient's understanding of eswl procedure and possibly they teach them how it happens you know how long you have to take care when all will be the hematuria for how many days what could be the complication teach them the risk of recurrence then assess the patient ability to monitor urinary ph and interrupt the results during the follow up results visits so you should be able to tell them you know that the ph because acidity again 
you know if it is uh, you know alkaline it is good that they test to be maintained it should not become too acidic or too alkaline also so it should be in the normal ph so we telling them that has to be checked monitored then ensure the patient understands the signs and symptoms of stone formation obstruction infection all the complication teach them then if medications are pre prescribed for the prevention of stone formation explain their action importance and side effects to the patient so this is all about the continuing care teaching that we will give to the patient so we have done with renal calculi so two videos for renal calculi so in the first video we have seen definition what are the types are the risk factors pathophysiology risk factors symptoms and sign diagnostic test okay then we have carried on with management okay in this video management and then different types of management pharmacological and nutritional therapy stone removal procedures nursing process which includes assessment relieving pain monitoring and managing complication teaching points providing home and follow up care then continuing care okay so with this we finish the class for today and next class we will see the other conditions